I'd like to call to order the Monday, September 30th, special meeting of the Forever School Committee. Uh, Deb, would you please call the roll? Mr. Agio? Here. Mr. Bailey? Here. Mr. Dias? Here. Mr. Corey? Here. Ms. Larvey? Here. Ms. Pereira? Here. Mayor Coogan? Here. Salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings are trans or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. We have a few uh, people that would like to speak at public in input tonight. Um, we're going to respectfully ask you hold it to three minutes. Uh, first up is uh, Josh Lapater, the Wall Street Fall River. Good evening. Uh, I want to thank you guys for gathering to have a special session to plan for our bargaining. Since you likely won't be able to gather again to prepare for bargaining before the school committee meeting on the 21st, there are just a few things that uh, I'd like to be on the top of your mind when you go into the back room to plan. We're about halfway through term one now, and time is flying fast. Uh, we're in a race against time to staff all the schools, and we're a little bit behind the ball. I've had conversations about this around this school and across the district. Um, we have teachers who don't know how to give progress notes on their special ed students because they don't have an inclusion teacher in the class. Friends in the middle schools, veteran teachers who are burning the candle at both ends, taking on extra classes. Uh, we have schools that are already approaching double digit resignations since the school year started. I guess we'll have to wait until the 21st to see what those numbers are actually borne out. Um, but the students in Fall River can't wait for the committee to drag their feet on reaching a deal. So as you go into that back room, I would like you guys to think of them uh, as you plan on what you're gonna come back to the table with. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I say this right. Paige Vizi uh, Taunton, I'm gonna need a motion to waive the rules. So moved. Second. I have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Three minutes, please, Paige. Thank you. Good evening, members of the school committee. I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some internal struggles I face daily as an expecting mother with my first child. This is my fifth year working in the district. With taking a limited amount of sick, time, sick days, I have accumulated 54 sick days. This number might sound like a lot, but I still fall six days short of being able to take the full 12-week maternity leave. If I end up having a C-section, 16 days short of the 14-week maternity leave option for those mothers who need to recover from a major surgery. I just want you to keep in mind those 54 days going towards my maternity leave are only applicable if I take no sick time prior to the birth of my child in November. Being pregnant isn't easy and it comes with a variety of symptoms, but I have no other option besides showing up to work no matter how I'm feeling because there's, I simply don't have any other options. Starting in my third trimester, I have to go to the doctors every two weeks to make sure my baby is healthy. In my last month, I have to go every week. Women health offices aren't open on Saturdays, and my office closes promptly at 4 o'clock. Have you ever tried to get out of Durfee when school lets out? It's nearly impossible. If only we had designated spots and exits for teachers, or if I could take a quarter sick day for my appointments. But you denied those proposals, too. As a fifth year teacher who just blew through all my sick time and is going to have my loans forgiven, what is my motivation for staying this year? With no sick time bank, there's nothing financially tying me to the district. You're holding the door open for me to walk out. If you want to help retain and attract new teachers, I'd suggest offering a substantial maternity leave. We proposed on February 27th, 12 weeks of maternity leave for our members the following three school years. On June 11th, over three months later, you responded with an offer of two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks for those respective following three years. In a show of, in a show of good faith, we quickly counted our proposal to meet in the middle at four, five, and six weeks. You have yet to adjust your proposal over the past three months, and we have adjusted ours twice to get our family something, anything better than what you have offered. Tell me how that shows good faith in bargaining. 
You have budgeted my salary, you have budgeted for substitutes, and even though the reality is my students aren't going to have a substitute for my class, they will be sent to the cafeteria where all the Durfee students go when their teacher is out. So tell me, how are you losing money on giving us four weeks? Arlington got four weeks, Somerset got four weeks, Salem got six weeks, Newton got eight weeks, and Boston got nine weeks. You offered two weeks. What is the difference between our community and theirs, besides the obvious fact that their teachers get paid more? Why should my son have to suffer the consequences of this school committee's last lack of respect for new families? I urge you to recognize that maternity leave is an area that we cannot afford to lag behind other districts. We are already behind in terms of pay compared to other districts. It is time for you to take the lead for once. Providing your members with some parental leave is a good place to start. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Aguilar. Just, uh, we heard again, I think every time we start hearing that the Durfee substitutes are thrown into the cafeteria. I've asked in the past to get clarification on this from the superintendents. They say that does not happen. These people keep coming up saying it's happening. So there's a disconnect between what people are saying and reality. So I'd ask once again that we get a report for how many days the students are gathered in the cafeteria in bulk or whatever if there's no substitutes. Thank you. Next up, I'm going to need a motion to waive the rules. So moved. Uh, the gentleman's from Brockton. I got a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Robert Gorman, three minutes, please, Robert. Uh, before I begin, uh, Mr. Aguirre, we could pull up the coverage paper that goes out every morning and show you that whenever it is unfilled by a teacher, CAF is written right in there instead of a teacher covering. Please feel free to email that to me. Will do. Thank you. Uh, good evening once again. This special meeting was called for the purposes of discussing strategy and bargaining, and while every public comment I make is an optimistic attempt at closing the gap and understanding between us, judging by your representation at bargaining, they've fallen on deaf ears. It feels like I could say absolutely anything up here and we would end up with the same cookie cutter response from your honorable attorney. So let's save everybody watching at home some time, jump right to the end, and go over that response together. He'll start by talking about your last offer. He'll make vague overtures about how this is the best offer in the Commonwealth, but those at home paying close attention will begin to notice that he's added qualifiers over time. At first, it was the best offer in the Commonwealth, period. Then it was the best offer in the Commonwealth where reductions in staff weren't speculated on. I'm sure next time it will be the best offer in the Commonwealth, out of Bristol County, in the last week. The truth that they're trying to avoid is that it isn't the best offer anywhere because it's an offer that still leaves Fall River schools behind. To confuse you at home, he'll make references to step increases that were already agreed upon in past contracts, as though they were items brought forward to be bargained over in the current process, which is frustrating, but not the worst part. Now, the biggest part of the Honorable Attorney's spiel that I take issue with is when he suggests that there were no bad contracts. Through ignorance or malice on behalf of the school committee, he's conflating bad contracts with bad faith negotiating when he says this. Bad faith negotiating would be the school committee withholding information, keeping numbers from us, which nobody is accusing you of doing but bad contracts happen all the time. When we negotiate a contract, as the attorney has mentioned, none of us have a crystal ball, none of us know how the economy is going to turn out. So we get what we can with the information we have and assurances that we'll be made whole if the district for some reason has a boom between contract cycles. As school committee member Kevin Aguiar touts, with every contract there are winners and there are losers. We've been referring to past contracts as bad contracts because for some strange reason, the FREA has been the loser in the vast majority of recent contracts, none more so than the last one. The Fall River School District received a historic increase in funding that teachers fought for through the Student Opportunity Act. Now that you have these resources, you're not even gonna give us our fair share. You're going to create 500 additional positions, less than half of which are FREA members. You talk about how the kind of catching up we're looking to do isn't something that is possible in a single contract, and I agree. Which is why this isn't something that we started just now. This is something we started last contract cycle. State adjustments like the Student Opportunity Act are once in a career adjustments. You will never get another opportunity to invest in holding on to effective teachers like the one you have right now. And what did you do instead of budgeting property for adequate pay? You spent it, allocated it elsewhere, right away so you could plead pauper at the bargaining table. But you already know all of this, so I have to ask, what kind of legacy are you trying to leave behind here, Mr. Mayor? Do you realize that if you're successful here, if we were ever forced to take the last offer on the table, that you would be responsible for destroying morale in Fall River Public Schools? 
that every single teacher that would exodus as a result would spread the word that Fall River doesn't respect its teachers, that Fall River sees its teachers as an expendable resource, that Fall River has perfected the art of retaining teachers for an average of five years or fewer. That can't be your vision for the future of education in Fall River. I know you want to do better than saying, yes, the pay is low, but our teachers know what they were getting into. I know you want to be the mayor that allowed Fall River to stand proud amongst its surrounding districts in respect okay. of its teachers, right. instead of kicking the dirt and saying, well, we did our best. Don't you want to be the mayor that was true to his word, right, a mayor that would advocate for education in Fall River? Three minutes, please, Robert. You advertise yourself as a mayor that was pro-education. I don't want the question left on the table. Well, Who did you expect to do the teaching? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Next up, Kristen Anderson, Robeson Street, Fall River. Mr. Mayor. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Dyer. Thank you. I'm just on the last citizen's input um, through you to uh, Mr. Aguiar. Um, just, when did you um, ask, just so I can, we can keep record, um, when did you ask for that request for information for the um, cafeteria substitutes, just it's so we can know? citizen's input, Mr. Dyer. Uh, the last several months, so okay. I can share with you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Kristen Anderson, Robeson Street, Fall River. Are oh, you going to read it? Thanks, Deb. Three minutes, please. Good evening, school committee. Hello again. I'm here to express deep concern regarding the ongoing neglect of fair compensation for our dedicated educators. Despite their commitment to shaping future generations, they continue to face stagnating wages that need to reflect the increasing demands of the profession. 23 days. Educators have been working for 23 days without a contract. How much longer can you let this go on? How can you let them put their best foot forward with their students for last year's wages? How much longer can you say you're trying your best? How much longer can you say you're willing to negotiate just to humiliate educators? I've told my story of how I want to become an educator for the Florida Public Schools because of the teachers that I've had at the last several meetings, but these days, I question this childhood dream that these teachers have given me. I question it because, like them, I want to teach to make connections with students to help them succeed and give back to the district that gave me and helped me so much. But what will I get in return? Disrespect from the school committee? Well, below expected pay, government assistance just to buy groceries, to hold a job I'm passionate about. How can I live with these wages? And why would I want to work with a school committee that disrespects and humiliates their educators in bargaining? We need, to, we need this pay correction because while I talk about how in two years it will affect me, it's affecting these teachers now. Teachers that have worked for years, some majority of their adult lives and ones trying to get roots in a district as new educators. If you want to know what I think, I think the school committee continues to push off giving teachers their pay corrections as they know the city, fire department and police department's contracts are also coming up and they'd rather meet their needs than the backbone of the community, teachers. Without teachers, we wouldn't have these other professions. We wouldn't have students deciding they want to go back to, back to the city to give back in any profession they chose. We need, to, we need this contract to be ratified now, not tomorrow or in a few weeks, but now. These educators have been 23 days without a contract. This school year has started. Don't make this harder for our students and educators. If they strike, then what? Our learners are without teachers and they aren't being taught. They aren't learning. You won't have enough people to staff the buildings and schools will need to close. Students will slip from routines and when and if you settle, the students will have to go back into routines all over again. Enough is enough. Give them the pay correction now before you lose more educators and it affects students' learning time. Find a way to fix it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number three is a request for executive Chairman, session. Mr. Chairman, on that last citizen input, I'd like to correct the record, and I think we should get something out to uh, the general public, generally speaking, related to budgets. So the individual who wrote in, uh, if I followed it correctly, was trying to say that the mayor actually has money. He's worried about the money that he's going to have to pay to police and fire on the city side of the budget. So therefore, don't settle a contract with the teachers. And I think that just should be clarified for the public. 
and that the city has their part of un funds, the schools have their part of funds. The city has to put whatever's required by law into the school budget for the city and the school committee to be able to allocate those funds to the teachers, to the staff, to the needs of the buildings. Those two things are totally separate. And I think a lot of people in the community are getting confused with how much money the, the, the raises were for the city. This school committee has nothing to do with raises on the city side. If the city administration chose to give raises on the city side that they simply cannot afford moving forward and they created structural deficits on the city side, that's up to the mayor and his people. But what this school committee does is gets the pot of money that we've had over the last several years and then we plan and we expend those funds out along the years. In a, in a comprehensive way so that we won't have mass layoffs. There's not a structural deficit moving forward. That's what this school committee is doing. So the, the, whoever the writer was is in error, but I think it should be rectified and put out for the public to know what are the roles of the city, what is the budget on the city side, and what is the budget here. Like I said, if the, if the mayor chose to create a, a contract that's gonna be unfunded going forward and have to reduce 20 or 30 positions in each of the police and fire, that's on the mayor, that's not on the school committee. So I just think we need to clarify what the roles of each side are, and then we're trying to do the best we can with the available monies we have so that there's not mass layoffs and get a fair contract. That's what I think needs to be put out there. I yield, thank you. Okay, if we have a request for executive session, Mr. Um, Assad, is, yes. is there a reason to go? Sure. Yes, there is. Wanna no, read them, please? Um, First, be Master on Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining agreement, including uh, hearing grievances relative to all professional teaching employees of the forward school system, including coaches, Title I teachers, nurses, occupational physical therapists, and specialists in the teaching profession represented by the Forward Educators Association, as the chair is determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the committee. Master General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all administrators and employees represented by the Forward Administrators Association, as the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the committee. Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all cafeteria employees, the Forward School System represented by the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Council 93, Local 1118, as the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the committee. Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all maintenance employees of the forward school system represented by the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. Council 93, Local 1118, as the chair has determined that open session may have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the committee. Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to uh, to collect the bargaining relative to all custodial employees of the forward school system represented by the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Council 93, Local 1118, as the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on a bargaining position of the committee. National Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all safety and security employees of the forward school system represented by the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Council 93, Local 1118, as the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on a bargaining position of the committee. Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all civil service, civil clerical employees of the Fall River School System, represented by the Fall River Department of Civil Service Clerical Employees Association. As the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on a bargaining position of the committee. Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3. Uh, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all paraprofessionals uh, employees of the forward school system represented by the forward federation of paraprofessionals the chair has determined that open session may have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the committee we will reconvene there may or may not be statements at that time i need a motion and a second so moved. second i have a motion and a second deb please call the roll mr Agg, yes. yes mr bailey yes mr dias yes Mr. Corey? Yes. Ms. Laravi? Yes. Ms. Pereira? Yes. Mary Coogan? Yes. He says to the executive session. We're back in session. Deb, please call the roll. Mr. Agnew? Here. Mr. Bailey? Here. Mr. Dias? Here. Mr. Corey? Here. Ms. Laravi? Here. Ms. Pereira? Here. Mayor Coogan. Here. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. 
I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Deb, please call the roll. Mr. Igan. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Dias. Yes. Mr. Corey. Yes. Ms. Larvey. Yes. Ms. Pereira. Yes. Mary Coogan. Yes. We are adjourned.